Thank you so much for tuning in. Appreciate your time, appreciate your company. And I thought that while I was going over some maintenance with regards to my orchids, I was going to show you something that I look out for, how I go about it, because with 300 plus orchids, one could maybe lose track. So this is a quick video with regards to orchids that attract mealybugs and how you can quickly go through your collection if you have a similar circumstance. So I'm gonna scoot you back a little bit while I work on these orchids and let's talk about it. You can see I've been busy. My garlic alcohol is almost empty. Yes, this is a small bottle. Because of this garlic alcohol, I don't need to actually make a huge batch of it as it works. It prevents any mealybugs or even scale to come back after a short period of time if you're not able to be on top of it all the time every day like in my case i can be over my orchids all the time every day because i'm currently unemployed but when that isn't the case then what how can you you know give your orchids a once over and be on top of it and avoid any kind of a pest infestation and it being too late one or two mealybugs no biggie Garlic alcohol actually is awesome. We know what the alcohol does. It dehydrates the pest, scale included. It just eliminates any thrips immediately. And well, the same thing with the mealybugs, it'll also just take care of those immediately. That is the alcohol. But that doesn't mean that they won't be back the next day, the next day, the next day. And who's got time for that? Especially if you have a big collection, if you have life, if you're on vacation and all that good fun stuff, what do you do? The garlic inside the alcohol is actually the repelling agent. Your orchids won't be smelling of garlic, promise. I promise you, your fragrances and all that stay intact. But for the bugs, the essential oils in the garlic, they know and they stay away. There's something with the garlic they don't like and it works. So instead of applying alcohol every day, every second day, as you would need to because these guys come back just because you've killed five doesn't mean that there's four others lurking and so on and so forth. Do that across a collection with 300 plus orchids. Even if you only have 10 orchids, it doesn't matter. The fact is it is time consuming and we don't catch on. The garlic in the alcohol will give you at least seven days, if not 10 days before you have to do an application again. Your spot checks will also be so much quicker because you've applied the garlic alcohol solution to the orchids that you are aware of, and then you don't have to worry about it as much. I mean, a quick spot check, for example, you can see a pattern going on here when it comes to which orchids would attract mealybugs. Every plant attracts mealybugs, every orchid would attract mealybugs, but there are some candidates that are much, much more prone, and depending on your climate, you can start to single out which of your candidates, regardless of how much care you take and how on top of things you are, that they will always attract mealybugs. In my case, Dendrobium tortile is one of them. Always got mealybugs, never an infestation, just the one or two that you see, but I have to keep an eye out on that one. Dendrobium nobili, no ID, has mealybugs. Last year I had growths taken out, even just by the two or three mealybugs that were on a brand new growth, the growth failed. Now, <laughs> isn't that amazing? Look at all those canes, look at all those beautiful leaves. Yes, garlic, alcohol did the trick, not only to eliminate the mealybugs that I saw coming, but the canes could grow out because there wasn't a reoccurring incident with more mealybugs if I was busy doing something else. Dendrobium antenatum right here, brand new to my collection, not yet safe in the pot, has an affinity to be attracting mealybugs even though the orchid next door doesn't. Isn't that strange? And then here is Eria hyacinthoides, different kind of foliage for sure, but a mealybug magnet nonetheless, especially on new growths. Do you see a pattern here? <laughs> When I go through my collection on the daily, I mean, it's a habit in my head now. I know what I'm looking for. I know what I've done the day before, the month before, etc. So this is a habit, but I thought I would share a habit with you today. And that is your foliage can also help you to group your orchids as to what are you doing? Even if it's not all about dendrobiums, but the foliage, let's just say, look at the pattern here. Green, lush, soft, green, lush, soft. Green, lush, a little bit stiff, but the color, 
all across the board. The area is not necessarily lush and soft, but it has a different texture to the leaf and the color. And these are the candidates. I have others in my collection that also have a similar aspect and semblance regarding the foliage. And when I go around with my garlic alcohol, if that is the day I'm going around, I'm targeting all the orchids in my collection that look like this. I'm not saying I'm gonna forget about the others because clearly I have issues with scale on Phalaenopsis. So I'm always looking, but when it comes to treatment, I group my orchids based on the foliage, based on the candidates that I know have this little knack that something about them mealybugs do enjoy and they'll come back for more. Not with this stuff, not with this stuff. Let's just check out the nobly how she's doing. Look at that. I mean, if there was a mealybug problem, the leaves will always have a little bit of a nick or a bruise or something. But I have clean growths to the point that I have actually managed to grow a proper cane. And that is amazing. New canes, new blooms for the next season. Check this out right here. But you see the leaf structure, glossy, shiny, somewhat on the waxy side. Antenatum, leaf structure, glossy, shiny, somewhat on the fleshy side. Look at what the tortilla looks like when the sun isn't blinding us. But look, glossy, shiny, somewhat on the lush side. And then look at the, just compare the two leaves from the mealybug prone, nobly, and the tortilla. And that is how I go about my collection and I look. Today, maybe the color dark green will be on the rotor for my garlic alcohol. And then maybe the next day I have a rotor going for the light green and the fleshy ones that I know mealybugs try to get to. And I can do that now every 10 days. In the beginning of the season, I had to do it every seven days just because I wanted to be 100% sure that nothing was going to manifest itself and make itself too cozy, that I, I got ahead of it by doing this every seven days. And I was just putting everybody outside to give them their once over and a bit of spray. And I thought, hang on a second. It always sounds like a lot of work having a look-see around your orchids. And then maybe, you know, time is a factor. Sorry for that jiggle. Time is a factor and we want more orchids, but how do we group them to take care of them. One thing is genus. Well, how many Lelias have you got? 300, 400. That can be overwhelming for a single day because the others need attention too in a different capacity. So seeing what I was just doing, I thought, hold up, camera, let's talk about it. Foliage, and it breaks the whole task down to something so minute. If you have, for example, an orchid that has a problem at the base and you've got roots at the base and you don't want to be going around misting constantly, then here's the thing. What you can do as well is coat a paintbrush with the stuff. Alcohol will also work <laughs> if you just paint it on. And sometimes there's a structure that has a little bit more going on, a little bit more protection required. And even if you don't have bugs and you want to do this as a preventative measure, take the paintbrush and literally paint the orchid and the structures and then walk away and leave it for 10 days. And I'm telling you, it works. I promise it works. A, you can keep control over what your collection is doing with regards to based on the foliage. Once again, in my case, I know this kind of foliage is very prone to mealybugs. And as a preventative measure, it doesn't matter. It doesn't get out of hand. It takes me about 20 minutes to go through my collection that have this kind of an appearance and leaves. On another day, I may take all the fowls and I'll, I will paint the bases of the fowls because I have a scale problem there. Not this season, touch wood. So far this season, I have not had a fowl taken out by scale. I had two fowls taken out last year by scale, but I wasn't using this stuff. It is so easy to make. I have made a video about it. I know that for those of you who have watched my videos from Jump, Thank you so very, very much. You probably already know about this. I don't know if you've had results with it, whether you've tried it or not, but for anybody new to my channel, I just wanted to give a breakdown and add another little bit of a nugget or a detail with regards to foliage and how to maintain and keep those pests away and group your workload based on foliage. 
Anyway, I hope that this was helpful. I don't know, it was just one of those spur of the moment videos where I just thought, well, set up the tripod, talk away, and explain your reasoning. If that helps somebody, excellent. My job here is done. No more mealybug infestations. I don't consider one or two mealybugs an infestation. That is the nature of the game. I consider taking out my new growths by mealybugs an infestation. And the same with scale and thrips. This stuff works for thrips as well. If you have any questions regarding this, let me know in the comments below. If you would like me to make a separate video explaining everything in a little bit more tranquil manner, instead of babbling away all excited, just as my thoughts are blurting out of my head, <laughs> let me know in the comments below as well. I would be very, very happy to elaborate either just by a comment or I'll just put another little video together and show you how this, this, has saved my orchids in 2021. I don't know if I've mentioned, but thank you for your time. Hope this is helpful. Really appreciate having you here. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.